Filmic Pro is quite possibly the best third-party filming app available today, and it's full of professional features. But Motion Cam can do one thing that Filmic can't, record raw video. Before we compare footage from both apps shot on the Samsung S22 Ultra, OnePlus 10 Pro, and Google Pixel 6, I have to tell you, these are very different apps. Filmic Pro is fantastic for all types of filming. It's a Swiss Army knife. Motion Cam is basically only good for just one use, but that use is awesome. It's a lightsaber. I'll go over settings, a lot of test data, and performance when editing, but let's look at the footage first. I filmed at 30 FPS in both apps, RAW from Motion Cam, and 10-bit HEVC at the Filmic Ultra bitrate from Filmic Pro by turning on Filmic Labs on all three phones. Here's the base footage for my spinning fake flower test on the Pixel 6. Same shot with some light grading. You can see a little more noise from Filmic in this dark area of the frame. When we really push the footage with a heavy grade, Filmic falls apart particularly with these artifacts in the dark area. Here's the S22 Ultra's base footage for the same scene. Already, we see Filmic struggling with oversaturated colors and noise. A few quick adjustments only makes those problems worse for Filmic. And this heavy grade is simply unusable on the Filmic side, while Motion Cam's raw footage has gotten noisier, but it still holds up well. 10 Pro base footage. With the light grade, I mostly tried to match exposure between the two apps. On the heavy grade, the apps still do a good job. For this spinning fake flower test, I give the Wint in Motion Cam and the OnePlus 10 Pro. For this outdoor scene, I shot all of the filmic footage in Log V3 from the Cinekit add-on, and the Pixel has some issues with it. It took me a minute to figure out what was going on, but I think the culprit for this lost data is that filmic is recording in H.265 main, 10 L5.2, and it's just not playing well with Log. I don't know if this is a bug or a limitation from the Pixel or with filmic, but it's not present on the S22 Ultra or 10 Pro, which film in H.265 main, 10 L6.0. If you know what's going on, please drop a comment. I'm Curious. For the S22, even in the base footage, there's a good amount of over sharpening and noise from Filmic. I don't like it, but this scene is certainly brighter than the spinning flower, and Filmic does perform better. I still prefer motion cam though. The base footage on the OnePlus looks fine here. Perhaps a bit over sharpened, but not as much as the Samsung. I'd say the Samsung and OnePlus actually perform very similarly for this scene, and the raw footage wins. Again, motion cam and the OnePlus win. Are you wondering how well optical image stabilization works for each app? For this walking behind a building outdoor shot on the Pixel 6, we're shooting long and have the same information loss as the last. Scene. It also looks like the OIS is a bit snappy and unnatural with both apps. OIS looks awful on the S22 Ultra with either app. More snappiness that really hurts the fluidity of the video. While I would suggest to shoot with a gimbal for all these devices, it's an absolute must on the S22. Looking at the log footage again from film, it just seems so over sharpened and unnatural compared to motion cam's output. The OnePlus performs the best with stabilization, and again the footage looks good. Here I would say that Filmic is producing a sharper video than motion cam, and I prefer it. So who wins this round? I would say either Filmic on the OnePlus, or if you had a gimbal, motion cam on the S22 Ultra. I had a strange Filmic or Pixel 6 bug for this footage of me sitting down. I couldn't select log or even the menu to select log or adjust saturation and vibrance. Luckily, I got a screenshot of that. And we're back to good looking non-log footage from Filmic. I miss focus with motion cam, so all of these raw shots are a bit soft, but it still holds up better than Filmic with the extreme gray. Just not by much. The S22 Ultra's Filmic log footage looks rough. Blocky artifacts and over sharpening just everywhere. It's really disappointing. As you can guess, the more we manipulate the footage, the worse Filmic looks. Motion cam might just be a must have app for S22 Ultra videographers. I can't believe I'm saying this, but once again, OnePlus is producing great footage with both Filmic Log and Motion Cam's raw video. I prefer Filmic's sharper shot this time since it also holds up very well on this bright outdoor scene. Winner this round is Filmic, and I like what the 10 Pro and Pixel 6 produced, even Filmic's non-log footage. Last footage sample is this assortment of children's balloons that I stole from my kids. You know, that makes me sound like a bad dad. So here are the children's balloons that I stole from random children I don't even know, because I'm an amazing dad. I didn't shoot these in log with Filmic this time around, so the Pixel 6 looks pretty great with both apps. Again, the S22 is just over sharpening with Filmic and it's really evident in the extreme grade. And both Filmic and Motion Cam look excellent on the OnePlus 10 Pro. If this video has been helpful so far, please give it a like and thank you for that. Here's a comparison of the footage from each phone side by side by side. 
I would rank Pro Video from these two apps on these devices in this order. OnePlus 10 Pro, Pixel 6, S22 Ultra. OnePlus is just consistently great and often the best using either app with no OIS snapping. The Pixel 6 varies from looking great on both to unusable due to issues when shooting log and the snapping with OIS. The S22 Ultra surprisingly performs the worst, I think, with its snapping from OIS and over sharpening with Filmic. But its raw footage is just as good or better than the OnePlus besides the OIS snap. But these footage samples alone don't tell the whole story. Remember, motion cam is a lightsaber great at just one thing, video quality. But that quality comes at a high price in terms of file size, additional conversion time, and slower editing and post. For comparison, an 18 second clip at Filmic Pro's top tier quality produces a file that is 490.7 megabytes. Not bad. I recorded the same scene for another 18 seconds using motion cam with compression, vignette correction, and zero stack frames. I'll explain all that shortly. And the file size is 5.01 gigabytes. Yep, 10 times larger. You only get these files after converting the raw container that motion cam generates, which are also huge. And although you can convert on your device, I strongly suggest converting on a computer using the developer's Motion Tools app, which you can download from GitHub. Since converting on your device will generally take more time, eat up valuable storage space, and you'll miss out on all the conversion features from the desktop app. This is where you can decide to compress the DNG files, apply vignette correction, and preview frames to determine how much noise reduction needs to take place. Frame stacking is how motion cam reduces noise, and it works pretty well so far. You can stack 4, 8, 12, or 16 frames, and then adjust further with these four sliders. Check out my Poco F3 motion cam video for more information, but for all the sample footage you've seen, I stacked 8 frames, compressed the DNGs, and applied vignette correction. The conversion time can really add up though, so a conversion with no stack frames, compressed DNGs, and vignette correction took 59 seconds for that 18 second clip. 4 stack frames, 4 minutes and 58 seconds, and the max 16 stack frames took 10 minutes 9 seconds using my 2020 M1 MacBook Pro. Thankfully, you can record to external storage using motion cam, and even split your recording across internal and external storage, but if you run out of space on your external drive, the data will be corrupted and you'll lose all of your recording. Once you have your footage converted, how easy is it to work with in editing? It's not great. Uncompressed footage pushes the CPU percentage to 64 and GPU percentage to 42 with choppy playback and DaVinci Resolve. Compressed DNGs with vignette correction take up an unholy 410% of the CPU, which must be voodoo because I don't even know how that's possible, and a much more believable 69% of the GPU. And yes, playback is still choppy. Filmix HEVC 10-bit ultra bitrate footage uses up a more modest 45 and 36% of the CPU and GPU and playback stutters significantly less. So depending on your computer, you may need to convert to proxies when editing motion cam's raw footage. A few more downsides to motion cam before some positive points. This app is still in early development, so things like audio recording, focusing, and nailing exposure can be tricky since there's no audio meter, no focus peaking, and no histogram. And not being able to preview your recordings within the app or in any mobile app as far as I know can be a problem. I really think that Filmic Pro is the better choice for most projects. However, I didn't mention that all these motion cam clips were recorded not at 4K, but at the native resolutions of the sensors for each phone, which means all the shots from motion cam are larger than what Filmic can capture. Check out this chart for all the resolutions both apps film at, which cameras are supported, and what frame rates. I went through and tested all of this. This means by cropping to 4K, motion cam's file sizes get a little bit more manageable. Also, motion cam does have a sensor clipping overlay, aka zebras, which are helpful. So should you install motion cam today? Absolutely yes. Just keep in mind that storage space can be an issue, and that the app is super new and in early development. So if you were trying to find a Filmic Pro replacement, motion cam is not it for now. But at least wireless play can help you replace your old phone with a new one. Great transition. They have OnePlus, Samsung, and Google devices, as well as phones from Xiaomi, Realme, Motorola, and more. I've bought a few phones from Wireless Place, and they always ship fast and internationally. Have great prices, plus they include a US adapter for the charger if you need it. Please use my discount code PC10 when you check out. If you want to support the channel or just want to save a little money, a link to the site is in the description. Please subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and feel free to comment with any questions you might have, and I will answer them perfectly with gusto.